I think I'm mostly ready here. The next match here is going to just be the next one in the bracket. This is uh, Michael Weston of uh, Burn Notice fame, obviously. Obviously. Yes, I, obviously. I say that as if I've watched the show. I haven't, but yeah. So, I mean, so we're we're going to look at, look for some real sneaky uh, moves, assuming uh, the player is staying in character. Lots of... Uh, that would make sense for this game. I'd be on board with that. depth knowledge mm-hmm. and... Uh, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Let's let's get to picks and bans here, and also the uh, their voting here on their yeah yeah. Let's get their uh, their scores, and then your Magic Game Boy can tell us how it all turns out. Yes. Well, I mean it's Gabra's Game Boy, anyhow. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like we got uh, some courtyard love uh, from Michael Weston, and then some uh, not a whole lot else. Some okay venues like ballroom and uh, high rise, and then. Uh, uh, Clarice very much likes uh, ballroom and uh, Redwoods. Okay, somebody's okay. lying. Yeah. Somebody is lying here. No, I'm kidding. I, people do like Redwoods, but apparently yeah, think, they... it, it turns out people like Redwoods. They're just all fictional. Yep. yep. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll see. Uh, we'll see uh, what the Gabriotron uh, comes up with here. Beep, 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 beep. Do we need one of those? Do you have any sound effects yeah, here? I, I should, I should. Beep, bop, weep, wop. Here we go. Come on, Redwoods. Oh, we got oh, the grass. no whammies. Unfortunately, no, no, no Redwoods. But we <laughs> no do whammies, have ba- no Redwoods. We have Ballroom, uh, which I, I sort of saw, saw coming a little bit because they both mm-hmm. liked it at least somewhat. Uh, courtyard, uh, lovely. Uh, pub. Tan once again. I, I wow. feel like this. Uh, I feel like this algorithm's a little biased towards Tan, possibly, and then Terrace. Possibly. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think there we... is an algorithm that's not just uh, Gabriel just going. Argh. Might be as random as the name assignments, for all we know. It, that computer is a black box. We are yep. not actually auditing this at all. Gabriel can do what he wants. Machine learning, mach- you know, machine learning, all that. It's just the shark picking. Yeah, you that's what right. it is. <laughs> Yep. it's just the shark picking balls out of a giant aquarium to manatee style that's all it is yep. clarice right. who i i guess we'll say clarice rather than yep. say that's that entire abomination yep. of a name playing yep. as ponytail on right, ballroom here, me, to i'm start. not quite there yet all right all right am, i'll let you catch up all right but ponytail ballroom clarice hello clarice in three Oops. two one playing it question mark did we play it yes we did play it we did There's play a... it all right okay. here we go Chance All right, we are. Pro- yeah. take it. Does not target. take it. And it was a pretty good opportunity, too. And we're not going to stand too close to our seduction target either. And it's going to be just 23%. And we're all alone with them. So, on one hand, we're the only person with them, flirt paired. On the other hand, we're not standing anywhere near them. So, probably not. And the seduction target leaves anyway. The question is, how long are we going to stand here? We are prompted. It is our time to talk. And we do. But I can't imagine we're going to stay here too long. Seduction target's at Windows, though. So, we're probably going to talk long enough to see where they land next at minimum. This is a situation where we had a chance to just break etiquette. And we will break animation there and leave. But this is going to be a player that respects etiquette at least somewhat, as it's unlikely the sniper was paying a lot of attention to that side of the venue at that point. We probably could have gone away with it, but instead, we are going to sit there and we are going to talk to mom there for just a while before we leave to this conversation. I wonder, based on the angle, if we are setting up for a reverse drive-by, if the ambassador goes this way rather than the other, there's a decent chance they're going to walk by this corridor. They absolutely do. And there's a fake banana bread and a cough. I no. think that might have been action priorities. I think the bug was the attempt, and I think they messed it up. Let's see where the lowlights come off. How much did we give away there? Only two so far, two old women, white dress and our seduction target queen. I don't think the cough was actually seen, but I think we set up for a bug and then mucked it up. Oh, that's so unfortunate. The the action priority there probably would have given us a really good bug. Instead, it gives us a really bad contact and uh, it doesn't narrow the party down that much. And that kind of cough can put a lot of pressure on the sniper to say, oh, a cough happened. I need to be figuring out who the fly is and I didn't. That can be a little bit demoralizing. It's the only saving grace here. It's absolutely true. Sometimes, like a time ad, it just sort of prompts a shot, even though it's not mission progress itself. And in this case, that's literally true. We know also the mission did not even take, of course, because it was going to be a fake. We do hit a green on the seduce after missing at the painting pad narrowly before. That's going to get us up to 55%. So we're going to need a green test just to three flirt at this point. Our seduction target is bouncing around, has been brought back up from a low light, by the way, from before. Now as a highlight because they are bringing the case back to the ambassador. They have finally settled a different conversation, so maybe we're going to go finish now. Let's see. There is room next to them. We're taking our time. Clarice very much taking our time. The seduction target leaves oh. immediately. Spurned. And look at the time. Only a minute 20 with zero mission completions here. Uh, I know we said it last set, but you know, here on, on Ballroom, we still have to make progress. 
and we're going over to bookcase. Not a lot of missions we can do here, and we're three at bookcase. This is what happens sometimes after a cough, is you get very paranoid that you're seen and you just don't do anything. But I think if you're not dead, you have to assume you got away with it. That's the best thing you can do. Yep, we are moving around here. Michael Weston, by the way, protecting Amba very closely. Worried about the seduction target queen possibly bugging. Still a chance a sip shot could come off on our seduction target instead. In the meantime, the seduce is done. We do have the green book, and with so little time left, that has to go back into blue. It absolutely has to. But even that's not going to be enough. Even if we cover with a contact, what do we do? We have to hope a bug is possible. The ambassador is at statues again, the same statue they were at while we were waiting for that BB, for that bug rather, before contact is coming off it's a white test and red. long animation finally takes though low lights coming off that's three more five total we're gonna bring one of them back up and we're gonna dump this book in blue in the aftermath are we gonna get shot for this if we're not we still have to find another mission the ambassador's right next to us and it doesn't matter michael weston all over the book dump that game fell apart so quickly yeah it only takes a minute just a minute of sitting there idling getting uh Sunshine by your suction target one or two times can really have a big time impact. It feels like it's just a couple of seconds, but if you then sit there in conversation with a full idle cycle, that takes a lot of time off the clock. We we ended up in a really untenable situation. We went for the desperation book, and I think it was a reasonable decision given where we were. But with so little happening on the right-hand side for cover, we go over to blue right after the banana bread. It's just such a spy-like thing to do when we earn the shot. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you could see that timidity after the cough. So common. After the cough, you think maybe you are burned. And that's what Michael Weston did. Got him in the end. Now playing a spy general. Good walking bugs on ballroom. A good venue for it. In three, two, one, playing it. Here we go. We're right near the ambassador. Are we charging for them? No, we're going to go charge to the window instead. And we're going to look around the party. We immediately swing the camera around when we reach the window to see where everyone is. And there are three colorful arrows in one little conversation. Our seduction target, a suspected double agent, and ambassador. And now the spy for Pretty Little Rainbow. We are not right next to our seduction target, but we are close enough to seduce a little bit. And we get mm, bumped up to highlight and then right back down to neutral light. And I can imagine that after this flirt, which is 21% in the white test, we might want to take a bug on the way out. It was kind of a weird pass in this conversation. We didn't want to walk right by the ambassador, so we swing all the way around. We're going to leave this conversation with no further action. Uh, step over to this empty one close to statues. There is a possibility we can go for some kind of bug setup here, but it's not quite the right angle, and there's not really quite enough cover. We're just going to head over to the ambassador and take the bug ourselves. We're going to charge cool. right through. Yeah, and I think the arm actually went through the ambassador a little bit. Now we're hiding behind a pillar library style, and I there's no indication on the sniper side that Clarice has noticed. No, absolutely not. And sitting in this conversation, if you get away with one of those bugs, you have to say, okay, I got away with that bug. I need to assume I got away with that bug because if I didn't, I'm dead anyways. Let me just play my game aggressively the way I want to play it. I don't get frozen up by the fact that bug maybe wasn't landing exactly the way I wanted it to. We're going to head over to Fortress here for just a second after picking up that flirt. But with two minutes left, we're still in a good position here to have a chance to finish. Yeah, we had a green test flirt in the meantime, by the way. So we're up to 72%, which means this should be, oh, geez, I think just close enough to get 28% even with the white test. We're going to find out in a second. And it is white test. No, we are just barely oh. short. 99%, and the spy shakes their camera angrily. I think they could have squished in a little bit more, but they decided to take a little bit of a chance, and the white test burns them. The Two the minutes room. left. Contact is green, though, and we're still in pretty good shape here. We have a lot of time, but that is going to change things a little bit because otherwise we'd be one mission away with two minutes left on the clock, and that opens things up a lot. But now now we're going to have to wait around and get that done. It'll be a little easier with Duke leaving. Suction target hightails it to the other side. Emphasis on the tails. And he is at a painting pad, so he's not going to be there very long. I think we want to go do another mission in the meantime, and it can't be bugged because that's already done. This would be a great time to go pick up inspects. It's not the absolute end of the game as our suction target actually steps into statues. We're spending a lot of time here in this conversation as Toby walks over to our conversation. We will be offered a drink if we stay here. That's going to take a long time. So instead, we're just going to move away, maybe head over to try to find some other mission progress here next to our seduction target. There we go. Maybe we can get this flirt off before we pick up the statues. It's a green test, and it's a long time before picking up that statues, but we can't resist the flirt and center statue simultaneously. But it's a fingerprintable statue too, which means we're going to get a lot of heat on us. There's the highlight. But the question is, are we even suspect for the bug are we suspected at all if we are we might get shot if we're not we should win even with the suspicious timing we just finished the inspects with the two cycles but we're obligated to take this case which means maybe finishing fingerprint we don't take it we don't take it does the sniper notice no michael weston wants nothing to do with that case they don't want the prince because they're already in countdown and they win with a brazen bug i think that's the right decision to ignore that case it's sitting there on the ground the, all the way in the back of ballroom. The sniper might not see it. The sniper might not register that it was required. And picking up that case would have been really, really dangerous with that print on that statue. Finishing the game with partial mission progress, especially if you think the bug wasn't seen, gives you a way better chance of surviving as the sniper may be waiting for you to finish that mission, assuming it's your fourth.
That is an absolutely fascinating choice that is actually much harder because of the nature of this tournament. In a normal tournament, you'd know who you're playing and you would have a sense of their briefcase knowledge and which kind of missions they were focusing on at least, and you could make an informed decision about whether or not to take that case. But in this case, because you don't know their skill level, you have to decide which is riskier, that I finish Prince or that I ignore a case I'm obligated to take. That is an absolutely fascinating decision that is completely different in an anonymous tournament than it would be in a normal one. All we know from the results are that Michael seemed to make the right choice there, ignoring the case, going up 2 nothing, and now we're going into Courtyard. Clarice playing Kane in 3, 2, 1, playing it. I am absolutely tickled by that strategic choice before them right there and how the tournament format must have influenced it. Yeah, this will give us a lot of chances to see those kinds of plays, I think, as we try to learn from our opponent mid-set. Both of these players, I'm sure, watching the replays, trying to learn as much as they possibly can about who their opponents are and what their tendencies are. If they watch the replay and they see that, that could give a lot of information to Clarice and a lot of information to her opponent about what kind of strategies they should try as the match goes on. Yeah, I would recommend studying replays in the middle of sets quite a bit already, but on this tournament, I think you absolutely have to. You have to be updating your model of the opponent's skills and emphasis the entire time. Clarice has not done anything yet. We're going to windows because our seduction target is at statues. We really want that opening flirt like so many people do, but it's not here. So we're just going to join this conversation with a double agent instead. People are moving around the party. If a couple of them settle, it could be a time to take a good contact. And it looks like that's what Clarice is waiting for. You can see them looking around. The double agent leaves in the meantime, though, and goes to statues. So we're not going to get that done anytime soon. We're being offered a drink. The spy did not request it. And it took them a few seconds to notice, but they, they reject in time three or four seconds. We have zero mission progress with two minutes left. This is looking rough. Yeah, Courtyard, not really a venue where you have all that much time. It is only a 4 of 7 here, but the, the clock is probably shorter than almost any other 4 of X venue. We get our first flirt here, but with 2 minutes left, we're going to have to rush some kind of inspects here. We're going to have to get a very quick banana bread, and it's probably going to knock out a lot of people here. You can't always force a good banana bread in just a couple seconds on Courtyard. You have to wait for people to settle, and when it knocks people out, it knocks out high-value people because you're usually knocking out people at statues. Good point. Clarice, meanwhile, has made a little bit of flirt progress. It's still early enough that it makes sense to get a little bit done and just see what happens, but it's only a white test, 34%. That's going to hurt. A little bit crammed in this conversation, a little too close to the center. We were being offered a drink again, and now you're starting to wonder if we're going to be obligated to take these offered drinks and do something with them. But no, Clarice rejects again. Seduction target has moved. We are looking around the party. I think we're waiting to see the seduction target moves. And we are following them around the other side, clipping through people, though. Little trouble with the pathing here and jammed into this conversation. And even if we hit a green here, it's going to be a three flirt at minimum. It is a green, 85%. There's that familiar number. But we're going to need one more, and we don't have any missions done with a minute left. You can inspect swap. You can contact quickly. But I don't think you can afford to timer flirt here unless you get a little lucky. This is a place where I would definitely start considering a swap frame. Uh, you don't know who your sniper is. You don't know how on top of the fade they're going to be. But you probably have a pretty good sense that you're not mission winning here at this point. So if we can go to some kind of statue that a guest has been to, try to swap for them, hope the fate isn't seen. But before we let out a contact, it's still not going to provoke a shot. So that contact is going to be really important before we try to hit a frame. Yeah, we are alone in this conversation. And remember, Kane is obligated to idle twice when alone. And they only idle once and then head over to a conversation with a double agent. But you have so little time left, I think you have to break that anyway. It's going to be a white test banana on the bread. banana bread. We are talking. We stop talk. We are being interrupted, however, I think by Green Jazz. And we realize we have to add time. Even though we're in the beep beeps, it's a white Watch check, but we get out of there so quickly that it doesn't even take, and we have to go right back to the windows, right back to the windows, and this time it's green. I guess that's a little better, but the cost, etiquette-wise, could be huge. We now have 55 seconds for the sniper. We have less than 10, though, but we still only have one mission done. We need to go finish the seduce, and even then, it's going to be close, even with that time ad. We're trying to get into this conversation. We're bouncing off it. We bounce way off it, and we're at windows again, and we might have to time ad again because there is no room in that conversation until someone leaves, and they haven't yet. No, well, at this point, if that conversation is full, we can't just sit here and wait. We have to make other progress. We could go for this bug, and we will. It will take, but it will be seen, and it will be shot. We were just forced into an unwinnable position there, unfortunately, by the clock. Not able to get our flirt done in time. Yeah, it obviously happens to a lot of people where you get a little low on time. I will say the decision to realize they needed the time ad, that did come just in time, but then they rushed it a little too much, especially with a white test and hit the green right afterwards. Uh, you know, I think at that point, you might even want to commit to the timeout, commit to a frame, try to line something up. The time ad decision was fine, but the mechanics were definitely off. That is a rough start. That's three nothing now for Michael Weston, but they are spying on Courtyard, which still isn't the side you want to be on if you have to pick. Playing as Ponytail in three, two, one, playing it. Michael Weston with a chance to really go up big here. Takes control immediately, and looks like they're heading for the suction target right away. They absolutely do. 
They're going to talk immediately. It's only going to be a white test, though, 34%. But already looks very different than the previous game. Courtyard is a venue where you can get some kind of rush done. If you go for an early inspect and you hit some kind of good bug, that's an option. With a white test on the flirt, though, it's not as attractive because you have to space those missions out really far. A rush on Courtyard is one where you want to give the sniper not enough of an opportunity to figure out what's happening. So instead, we will take a much more uh, typical approach. We'll go let the timer reset. We're going to move into conversation not as close to our, conversa to our selection target. So this will put us in flu foot range, at least with the green. Not a whole lot going on, just a standard timer flirt, 64%. Yeah, if we look at the party here, the party's not really helping us very much. Not really a lot of statue visitors here. Uh, we have a highlight on Duke, and that might be it. Really on Courtyard, if you're paying attention to who's going to statue, that'll at least give you a chance to figure out who your frame targets might be later in the game, if you need it, who you need to keep in for real contact, which is extremely important. Uh, but with the party not really helping us out, with two minutes left, you sometimes have to find your own luck. Yeah, we are still waiting here. We're playing it very, very cool so far. It looks like we're just going to timer flirt twice. And no, we've actually oh. moved around a little bit, so it doesn't actually work. 98%, we commit to two timer flirts, and we do not actually finish the flirt from it. But we could go at the end of General's statue visit here and get inspects and flirt done simultaneously. I think that might be the goal. No, we're going to bounce off. We're going to go over and get a contact done instead and see where the General lands, I think. Here it comes. We are behind behind the giant statue of Alan Turing and the end of when this happens. And we are going to bail right afterwards on the green. Are we going to get a low light for this? No, General Will. Yeah, it's a good attempt, especially reading the laser angle, knowing that we're on the wrong side of the statue for the sniper to see us, giving us a chance to split into a low light. It doesn't quite work. And now we're a statue's high lit, but we will have missions done. And we'll go for a swap as well. Green swap here pending. That'll give us an out. But we still have to go find our flirt here, and that'll give the sniper enough time to maybe puzzle out what's happened. Yeah, maybe, but you can see that point. You can see the argument there. They're saying, while this is pending, I'm going to get the flirt done to distract them, maybe even throw a fake into the mix. A neutral light picks it up. The statue is not quite on screen. The bush was, oh, but we're still over. The sniper's still all over it. They were baiting it out. They did not actually see the fade, but they were clearly watching for it and take the shot. I wonder if that game goes a little differently if that flirt takes earlier, though. Yeah, absolutely. If the flirt takes earlier, we just have a few more options there. But really good work there from Clarice, knowing exactly who to shoot as soon as that swap comes off. No hesitation at all. Totally on top of it. And Courtyard, that can sometimes be hard to do because you don't know which side of the statue you're actually looking at. Someone here with at least a little bit of experience being able to track the statues effectively and take a confident shot after a green swap. No hesitation. What I find really interesting about that is that they were clearly waiting for the swap, worried about a green swap. However, they did not make a point to actually see the fade. It seems like they decided, if this swaps, I have no doubt that it's a green swap and not a white, no one framing, which could be smart or it could be a risk that happens to pay off. I don't know. But they watched the swap without making a point to see the fade, which is an interesting little distinction. Either way, that is an, that was an absolute must win or very close to it for Clarice, who's still down three to one, now playing on pub as green dress. In three, two, one, playing it still really behind, but they needed that win to stay close. They're going to take control immediately and join with a double agent on pub. Interesting. Not chasing down flirt, not chasing down anything. Michael Weston, meanwhile, is totally focused on this ambassador in that mosh pitch you call a pub entrance at the beginning of pub. Yeah, we could have a couple people there credited with bug, and sometimes that's just the way it breaks. You go for a flirt here, and uh, it's green. We have a chance here to take a very early contact, and with not a lot of people at bar, it wouldn't actually be the absolute worst. We'll give, uh, unfortunately, only a couple people real here as uh, so the SDA is out of conversation. So instead, we will go ahead and leave here and try to find some other progress somewhere on the map. Uh, of course, on pub, we can go for a delegate. Uh, going for bug on pub, really, really risky, especially when you don't know who your sniper is. If you've been watching this replays, though, you're probably aware that they're paying enough attention to the ambassador. It's not really going to be much of an option for you. And we do get that green flirt in, but we're not next to our seductive target, so it is just 35%. We go stand on the other side of the venue and then come right back. It looks like we're just going to bounce around uh, the sidewalks outside pub. And this time we're going to get a little closer to hope that it's a three flirt, even if we don't hit a green. There's still one person separating us. But the action test might actually end up mattering here. These are smaller conversation circles, though, so you can be pretty close even with someone between you. In this case, it's a green anyway. It doesn't matter. 81%. We are left alone with our seduction target. All the better for romance. But the question is, are we really going to stick around to try to get this done? You only need 19%, so I think you want to make progress somewhere else if you can. Clarice is definitely looking at the party, sees the ambassador, sees who's going to statues, and it looks like they might be going for a print here, although I think the double agent is about to smudge it. Yeah, that printed bar is cooked a little bit too long. It's going to be difficult for us to get this. It's going to be a difficult, I believe, at least. Uh, 
And we're going to pick up a delegate, presumably at the same time. That does give us options, and options are always good as the highlight comes on to us immediately before we even take the drink here. Uh, I'm thinking if we take this drink and we delegate this, we've invested enough time. It's unlikely that we're going to get uh, prints done, although we do hit a green on that. But this delegate is likely to come off. That is very interesting. Hits the green print, and we have the debate in pocket, so now we have a way to finish. Remember, the contact's still not done, and we still need a pretty bad flirt. Can't be the worst flirt, but going to be pretty darn close to it. Looking around the double agent, who's still inside the pub. Cowboy seems to like the wares and is just sipping at windows. We really want them to come in and join this conversation because this would be a good, great, great contact if they come out here. Sorry leaves, and we've decided we've had enough of this. We're going to go finish that flirt. Both twins are in that conversation, but we're only interested in the one that isn't glowing. Here comes the flirt. We're more than close enough. It's going to get the seduce done. We still got to delegate in pocket, but it's running out. We could delegate now and go try to rush a print. The ambassador is out front. Here comes the contact. I think we might have interrupted our own talk. I'm not sure. At the very least, we talked twice back to back very quickly. It's a white test. It's going to let off. Let me see here. Two low lights. Three, four. Four low lights is a lot for pub. This is very narrowed down. But if we're not suspected for the difficult print, we could still be very close to winning. The briefcase goes back to the ambassador, and there's a spot open next to them. I think we have to go stand and force them to leave. No, we do not. We join an innocent conversation, and we're just watching the AMBA. I think we're just hoping they put this down. It's the only way they win is if they put this briefcase down. I think they do not. They walk with it to the other end of the venue, and we're going to have to rush a bug or something here, and I don't think it's going to go well if we do. What's Clarice going to do? We're making a beeline for the ambassador. There's not enough time. The ambassador bounce off the conversation. He's not going to put the briefcase down. It's going to walk by us. We're going to bug right out front, and it's not going to take. That felt like a winnable game until that ambassador glued their hand to that case. Yeah, that's really unfortunate to see. We had enough time here, even on pub, to realistically expect to hit another print, but uh, not being aggressive enough for it, and the ambassador just not cooperating at all puts us in a situation where we're a little bit desperate, unfortunately, um, with the sniper giving us the highlight, uh, the bug was extremely visible. It doesn't even take. There would have been overtime. So uh, just kind of spying ourselves into a corner there. And in the end, uh, we end up shot for it. Yeah, the ambassador stubbornly not putting that case down at the end like it was... Uh... Like it was attached to their hand, nuclear football style, like a much more important diplomat than we assume they are, given how much time they spend at bars. Either way, I think we were very, very close to winning that spy game. But it doesn't happen, and we didn't have a lot of margin. We really needed that one. It's not over yet, though. 4-1 Michael Weston, now spying on pub. Again, inspect is turned off. That's the standard here. 3 of 6 in 3 2 one planet playing as green dress takes control immediately ambassadors coming into the big pile up chance for a bug no we're going the other way we're going to go to bar instead and we're just going to take the safe thing that's a flirt it's green it's 51 percent. we're off to a great start yep i think this is perfectly fine a little bit unfortunate the ambassador comes to bar very going to be very difficult for us to take this fingerprint as we've already requested a drink be some kind of strange break as the ambassador repads back to bar so it probably will be just a delegate for us as we do pick up a highlight immediately for being at bar uh, when we take this delegate, it will be known to the sniper. Even though we reject, let's see if we get a, a neutral light here. And we're not going to. We're going to stay highlight just for being at bar. Yeah, Michael Weston chasing the seduction target again. Going to try to finish this in two. For those who are joining a little late, these are all pseudonyms. These are all fake names. We don't know who anyone is during the tournament. Michael Weston playing green dress, but the girl has no name as far as you're concerned. We're going to find out who they are at the end of the tournament, but we're going to have a lot of fun guessing in the meantime. And the fact that they were able to two-flirt just now might factor into your guess a little bit. These ATs have been pretty kind to Michael Weston, or they're just really good at them. We don't know which it is, but the Seduce is done already with two and a half minutes on pub, and they are moving around, showing a little locomotion, bouncing off the cast member and going right back into a useless conversation. I'm going to imagine they're just going to talk and get out of there, though, because they want to keep moving. Yep, so we have our flirt done. We're in conversation with the double agent here. It's a reasonable place to take it. And on pub, if you can get all but one or two people in, it's a really good chance to contact. Uh, but it looks like Michael Weston not wanting to take it just yet. Uh, maybe we have our eye on one person in particular. We're trying to make sure it's in for it that isn't. As the ambassador comes next to us, gives us a chance for banana bread bug here as well. This is tempting. Banana bread, white test. That's going to ruin bread. the bug a little bit potentially, but we're just going to go for it, and it's going to take. Clarice is staring at it, reacting, worried about it, but I don't think they're going to shoot. Four seconds left. They're not going to shoot. The BB bug, exactly as you predicted, totally works. And with 98 seconds on the clock because of that two flirt, that probably factored into the hesitation on the shot. Such a good rush here on Pub. Uh, pub being a three-mission venue, you can finish extremely quickly. And after doing, as far as Sniper can tell, really nothing, just hanging out in this conversation, away in the back, not really moving around too much. And then all of a sudden, it all happens all at once, and the Sniper's just not on top of the two-flirt. 
five to one Michael Weston, and that was very, very well played. Would have been even better with a green B, but but in one case, the white might have helped cover some of the motion. I don't know, and there was no zoom on the bug either, so it was not especially protected. I think with that much time on the clock, you're just not worried about people finishing yet. And it was pretty well done besides. Clarice now playing for their tournament life here on Tayen, and they brought out the big guns, in a metaphorical sense, playing Smallman in three, two, one, playing it. And uh, Clarice now needs four straight wins to force those horrifying tiebreakers that we referenced earlier. They're going to start off next to their seduction target. It's going to be a white test 34%. Plenty of time on Tayen, though. So here's the question. If it's Smallman, is it cheese? Or is it frame hoping that they're watching you instead of someone else and then get paranoid? I know that's a tough open-ended question. 100% cheese. Not a tough question at all. If you're here on Tayen as Smallman, you have one goal in mind, and that's finding some kind of cheeky bug, some kind of cheeky microfilm animation, something that you shouldn't be able to do. Uh, that's what I'm expecting here, and I'm sure Clarice is not going to let us down. It's just a question of whether it's the K or the S. It's cheeky or it's cheesy. Either one will do. Seduction target leaves. We still have a third of the flirt done, and they're going to go to the other conversation. The ambassador's right next to us, but this is basically the only spot on Tayen you don't want to bug is right out front like that, just as a small man, no less. The ambassador eventually leaves, of course, and I got to imagine we're going to try to follow the seduction target, or we would, except they've just left, and let's see if they come right back in. Can we get a little bit, a little bit of luck? No, no, no. They're just returning the briefcase, and then they join us again anyway. Hey, that'll work. Yeah, you love to see that here on Tayen. If you only have to chase your seduction target once, that gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of staying in one place, trying to earn a little less suspicion. Though, of course, as small man, earning less suspicion is going to be really hard to do. We could idle uh, just window pad to window pad to window pad out front for three minutes, and I'm still not sure we get a little light. <laughs> it's another white test, 34%. Smallman's sheer animal magnetism draws Ponytail in. But then repulses her again, and she leaves. She's all over the place, but we've got two-thirds of the flirt, and we'll take it. We're going to chase her into the back. We're going to bounce off the conversation and have a little bit of trouble Ooh. entering. That's unfortunate, but we're small, and we're in the back of Tayen. The seduce is done. It's a green test this time. The only time we didn't need it, though. It's a three-flirt. I think we are ignoring Toby. We are ignoring Toby. It's been five or six seconds. Waiter gave up. Waiter gave up. Is Michael Weston is thinking about shooting one of the twins, though. Did not notice that the waiter gave up, even though the waiter has to kneel to offer to this character. It is much more noticeable than most, and it was not obscured at all. There's a bug attempt on the side. The hand is totally visible, and the shot comes in the shoulder, and Michael Weston is going to take the set definitively. Yeah, just a little bit of bad luck there in the back, but uh, ignoring Toby, we get away with it. Uh, even though, as you said, Toby has to very conspicuously kneel down to offer to us. But we saw a very similar kind of a bug here on Tayen in the previous set, uh, trying to hit it from this particular angle with your arm towards the sniper. It's just, it's not going to work. You're too exposed here. There's not actually the cover that you think you might have from the sniper camera. Laser is pointing right into us, and the bug is seen. All right, geez. Well, uh, got away with ignoring Toby, I think, or at least it was suspected and they're not willing to take a shot, but there was no indication on the sniper side that they noticed, and that, again, was totally unobscured, and you're Smallman, so it's all the more noticeable, but the bug makes it clear a moment later anyway, so it doesn't matter either way. A definitive 6-1 victory for Michael Weston. Okay, let's hear those guesses. Who did they think they were playing? Although, I'm going to go oh. first this time. I'll, I'll, I, I did not guess it all last time and went last, and I kind of cheated the system a little bit, so I'll go the opposite way this time, snake style. Um, I don't feel too confident about Michael Weston. They played pretty well, uh, but they took, capitalized on mistakes a lot too. So it's hard to get a good sense of their overall skill level. I'm going to say maybe Lev. Maybe Lev, I could see that. Uh, Clarice, I'm going to say Catnip. I think pretty decent chance of that. Hmm. You think so? I feel uh, like... Just my best I don't know. guess. If, if... Yeah, actually, I, I can see Catnip... Uh... I I mean, Catnip, very good player, but also known to get a little maybe flustered and panicky. Well, I was thinking specifically of some of the pathing stuff. That's something that's been a challenge for her. But not only that, um, I'm going to say it both in positive and negative ways. The pathing issues, which have been a bit of a challenge, and the very snapshot, the quick snapshot on the green swap on Courtyard also feels very catnip to me. When mm -hmm. she's on to someone like that, she takes very quick, aggressive shots. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. But when they're right, they look a lot like that. They look very confident and fast, mm -hmm. and that was very fast. So that is my best guess. A little more confident about that one than the Michael Weston one, but we'll get more information, at least about Michael Weston, as the tournament moves on. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, I don't, I mean, I would say like, at least like iron player versus bronze players is my guess. I can't say you're going full sure. division. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going, yeah, I'm going full sweep in like, uh, or maybe, you know, possibly silver, possibly silver, but maybe somebody like, uh, like paratroop is going to cast it earlier today. It's possible. Yeah. I don't be. think I... a few people are saying Manatters. I think that, I think Manatters might've done even better. 
Well, it's very hard to tell who that was, again, because I mentioned they capitalized on some mistakes. And because some of those venues, you can't necessarily get a lot of information about some of these players on the pubs of the world, right? Uh, certain venues yeah. give away playstyles more than others. Uh, what do you think, Corvus? And you are allowed to demure on any of these like I did the first time, of course. Well, of course, I, I, I wouldn't do that. That would be a, a very impolite thing to do. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, calling gonna, me out. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, I believe it was Clarice who had the time ads on uh, Courtyard. Is that right? Yes, that's right. That's right. So for Clarice, I'm going to guess KCM. Uh, who, of course, <laughs> is one of the uh, redacted names here for the time add into the beep strategy. Oh, and fair then, <laughs> right, if there's only one you know thing your SEL it, history, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be it. And then uh, for Michael Weston, I'm going to go with David W. Uh, because, of course, the abbreviation for West is W. Michael W. Okay, Corvus with all meme troll answers. I love it. I absolutely right, and then, love it. And then finally, I, I will reveal what uh, the players uh, guessed of each other. Uh, Clarice, Sophia, Mark, Morgan Stern uh, guessed that their opponent was Minioric. Okay. And then Michael Weston guessed uh, Yosh. So the only thing I like about this is that based on the guess, unless someone really wants to mess with us. Yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah, I thought <laughs> I figured somebody is going to guess themselves, right? Exactly right. That's exactly right. You feel like you can rule those out, but can you? Uh, this is a very I don't sneaky. Know. This I is a community. Like some, at least yeah. one person. One one. I'm, I'm willing to bet at least one person has done that already. I'm willing to bet that the very first person who guesses Po Noob was most likely to be Po Noob, yes. Uh, except, I'm, <laughs> that, except probably in that last... Uh, who knows? Anyway. I, um, I mean, yeah. they could have been playing... Look, you know, it's an entire unlike themselves on purpose. It's, it's an entire community full of people playing a game about pretending to be other people. So yeah. pl place your bet at your own risk. Caveat emptor. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there anything else to go over? Any other uh, thoughts or comments at Corvus? Uh, thank you so much for joining me. How'd you like this? Yeah. This was great. I thought casting the Hidden Cup gave us a lot of chance to uh, just make some really bold predictions here on the player's skill and see their play strategy evolve over the course of the set, see them try to adapt to their opponent. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of that as this format goes forward and the players get a little more comfortable <laughs> yeah. with it. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have a lot of time. Uh, I believe uh, the estimate that Gabriel gave me was that the... Uh, Round this round one we're in right now is going to go for about two months, and then ah, uh, okay, interesting. Around, well, I mean, so so yeah, yeah. Well, because well, two games, two games a week, it, it's gonna it's it's gonna take a while, and then the round 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 uh, three round uh, the rest of the rounds should be about a month. So this is this is a three three months journey here, basically. Uh, you know. I, uh, I don't know if we're going to go that long without serious leaks, but if we do, the tension will mount. We'll see if people can keep a secret. I would hope people playing Spy Party, of all people, would be able to. Uh, I'm just mm -hmm. going to throw it out there. My favorite moment of the entire night is that briefcase decision on Ballroom, which is going to be more suspicious. There's nothing more Spy Party than which mistake is going to be more suspicious to the sniper I know nothing about. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to see a lot of that coming. Not really yeah. knowing, especially early in the set, what you can get away with and what